hope you're doing well. We're going to start with a new screen here. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is I was just speaking to someone on Telegram, um, an old buddy of mine, and he was surprised by the USD strength that we're seeing recently. But if we just look at things technically, we'd have the big heads up on the USD strength. You know, if you look just at the year, look at those stats, the six month, the three month, the month, the week. And so really in a vacuum, we would have been wise to you know, buy USD, and it just turns out that the retail guys had longed these uh, currency pairs <laughs> despite the technicals, and that made it worse. So that's just to answer that query that I had about the strong USD. Just look at technicals, and if the sentiment agrees or makes it worse, then, you know, that's a confirmation, isn't it? It's an icing on the cake. Uh, keep an eye on the dollar yen, I think. That's what we're going to have to do probably today. And maybe even next week and we'll see what happens here the yen should strengthen but not necessarily against usd because usd is strong so bear that in mind we might see some well we should see yen strength but perhaps not against the usd because you've got that enormous weight to contend with here okay uh risk calc is that we're off uh 7.9 ssi now uh so that's going to aid um a usd because it's a safe haven and we're quite risk off. The VIX is above the 26.5, which is your yearly pivot. Note where the dollar bubble is, um, is in a strong buy section and the yen bubble is off note. So keep an eye on that today. If you've got spreadsheet access, keep an eye on that yen bubble. Very important. Uh, Kiwi's over there. And ideally we'd like that bubble to be a little bit smaller for our trade of the day. So keep an eye on that size, okay? Um, yeah, the yield's pumped, so that would that would uh, you know help a USD case. Um, that would give it some uh, tailwind, you know, in order to boost it. Uh, if these fall, then that will hamper the dollar. Then it will be a headwind for the USD. But they pumped, so they they could indicate more USD strength. So you've got to be careful, especially as the sentiment is very skewed. I just showed you guys the GU sentiment using our AI bot, and it's, uh, it's looking quite heavy. Uh, pound USD now. The yield curve is very uh, out of bonk, so that's that. They're, they are surging, as you can see, and um, not really much movement. The S and P moved the most, two point three five towards sell from last Friday. So you know that's a bearish case for the S and P. Is that the you know it's a sell, but they've added over time. So the dynamic value is uh, obviously the key. That's the dumb money flow. That's also the reason why that's in caps, and then that's why that's smaller, because this is more powerful, in case you're wondering. You know, dynamic is much more powerful than the static. And that's what I just talked about just now. And you can see that NU is the laggard, and UC is the leader. So uh, that's the, you know, Kiwi weakness, CAD weakness. And we'll have to see what the COT data brings out as well. well what we'll see with the USD, I assume it continued higher, because it has been strong for ages. And I probably, yeah, we can imagine to see another surge on cart positioning. Um, yeah, so that's wrong. It needs to be Friday, but that's fine. I can edit that. Uh, that's fine. That's no worries. That I know what that is. Yesterday, I was so tired, I forgot what their trade of the day was, but I know what it is, and uh, it's fine. And uh, we'd want to be looking at that Kiwi bubble, okay, just to give you a clue. We'd want that size to be smaller. Uh, if you want to get access, to just come to patreon.com. CDB and then select what T you'd like. Uh, if you want the bulletin and the trade of the day, just go for that. It's pretty affordable. It's not even 50p a day. And uh, just like, it's, it's you know, quite, quite affordable. Um, it's not going to really break your bank. It's eight pounds. So, and you can join us if you wanted to and unlock Discord at the basic tier. So if you wanted everything in Discord, it's just 15 pound a month. So get a lot of stuff. And if you've got a system already and you're looking for something to add to that system, then it's really, really good. If you haven't got a system, you might want to look to perhaps develop one and then you can use the sentiment on top. Uh, that might be an idea. Um, so the sentimentally S&P is heavy. You can see how it's a sell, 1.34. Um, so they're net long, okay. And they're net long German 30, France 40. US 30 and UK 100, right? So they're long, all those instruments. And uh, S&P, say they bought, they've been buying the dips. When they buy, it should fall. 
they might sell it, um, but we don't know what they're going to do. They might sell it, it might hit the MA, and then they might buy it at the MA. So if they do, it will fall. Um, so ideally, you get a copy of the trading station, and then you can see how it works. Okay, and you can see, um, you know, you get a decent setup. Admittedly, we had a lot of chop here at the start of the week. Didn't really do much. It went sideways, if you recall. And then we had to have a driver in order to shift the sentiment, and that was the uh, FOMC. And uh, that's the driver we were looking for in order to get a trade entry. Sideways, no good. But, um, you know, when it, when the uh, SSI is moving, uh, then it's a good opportunity to enter. That's the sentiment. Likewise, they went long, <laughs> which is a bit bonkers, but you see this candle, they thought, oh, this looks good. And of course, you can see this wick really encouraged all those people entering. They were like, oh, this is great. This is awesome. That was the, that was the buy and the dip opportunity. And of course, they held because the next hour it fell and they were in drawdown. And like, oh, well, maybe I'll get out. And there was a lot of uh, uncertainty. And uh, of course, they, you know, they sold it. So it came up. And now they've gone long, so we should fall. Okay, so it's a big old trap. That's what happened there. This wick got them in. But instead of getting out uh, in like a break even or a small loss, they held. All right, so that level is important, that that wick there. Um, German 30, uh, Hexagon warrants a bit of attention. Uh, if they sell it, it could be a risky buy, but we've got that Russia, Ukraine thing about the mobilization of the troops. Putin was also talking about nukes. Uh, so I'd probably not touch this at all. Uh, bearish fundamentally, bearish uh, sentimentally, dynamically, it might be a risky buy, but I'd probably just avoid it, to be honest with you. The, geopolitic, the geopolitics is a bit too risky. Gold uh, made a risky buy, uh, but we are a sell at the high level, and that's why it's risky. Okay, So ideally, you'd wait for this to be much lower, below 50%, and then you'd buy. With that conviction that you're not going to be, it won't be risky, this is risky because at the high level we are a sell, but a reduction of longs is bullish dynamically. Okay, um, S, uh, what am I saying? SP, <laughs> SLC, um, so a lot of mismatch, load of mismatch. Uh, pound yen is a match, EA is a match, and that's the only one. So it tells me to be careful because the dynamic is not agreeing with the static. We're getting a disharmony here. And I think uh, it could be caused by some of these yen crosses. And we should see uh, yen strengthen, but not necessarily against USD. It should strengthen against the weaker currencies. Okay. And uh, so a lot of mismatch. Uh, Dollar Swiss is agreeing. A lot of stop loss cost is EA. And uh, it's the same place as it was yesterday. The size is slightly smaller than it was yesterday, but that's the logical target. And uh, this is what you'd probably wait for this to get a bit higher. And especially if we're trading the New Zealand dollar for today's trade of the day, you'd probably want that to be higher before you enter. Get it to four out of six. Otherwise, it's just going to be a trap on uh, Kiwi. Because currently, that's really poor score, two out of six. You want that to get a bit higher. And then we know the trap's in, and then you can enter without, without with the knowledge that you're not going to be trapped. And uh, yeah, below 50% would be unusual. Uh, that's still a bit of a roulette, so wait for that to get higher. It's really important. Uh, Kiwi CAD was our trade of the day. Uh, BOJ intervened, and so all eyes on the cross yen. So I think this is why NC, New Zealand dollar CAD, it didn't move because they were more interested in their yen counterparts. So they were focusing on Kiwi yen and CAD yen and they were being focused. So this is possibly why the Kiwi CAD didn't do much is because, uh, you know, they were looking more towards uh, New Zealand dollar yen, CAD yen, because they, they wanted to stabilize this yen and they were all focusing on that. We didn't, I guess they probably didn't want, uh, you know, they were looking at yen because they've obviously got that in their portfolio and they've probably got a small portion of their portfolio in this particular currency pair. So they're probably fo more focused on these uh, as opposed to our trade of the day. So this is possibly why I didn't do much. And um, we have to be careful because it's Friday today. So we have to bear that in mind. Um, we had maybe 10 pips or so. It was nothing to write home about. Uh, it was pretty much like a no show really, but it's, it's positive, just barely positive. 
um, that's the yen, uh, but all eyes on that. Uh, dollar yen's moved away from strong buy. It's now buy. All right, so that's of note. Everything else is extreme. And there's the calendar. We've got a load of high severity uh, data. We've got PMI UK, we've got retail sales, we've got the PMI from the US, and then we've got the power speech. But nothing will be new. He'll just repeat what he said at the FOMC, and that's going to cause volatility again. Um, he won't change anything, but it will see more volatility at that event. And uh, we'll have to see what happens. So ideally, you wrap up your trades before, uh, if you can, if you're in profit, because this is probably going to spike quite a lot. And uh, I'll be back on Monday for the got data. Marco's on holiday for two weeks. He's going to the Seychelles with his family. So I'm really, really jealous of that. And uh, I wish him a, a safe journey. And he'll be back in two weeks. And uh, so that's that. So remember to keep calm. And don't get ag aggravated with the with the chop, because if you get aggravated, then you'll make mistakes. So keep calm and always trade safely. And if you are finding you're getting annoyed and frustrated, just take a little break and come back later, and uh, because you'll probably you know do some um, silly trades, and you'll know you want to stick to your plan. And if you haven't got a plan, you've got to get one. And remember to check Discord in uh, the trading plan doc. Use that. Okay, because you might not have a plan, and uh, if you haven't got one, you might just uh, you know make make a mistake. And if you haven't got a plan, you've got nothing to fall back on. You see, so get a plan and stick to it. Keep calm and always trade safely. And especially this week, it's been very volatile. I'm going to wrap up now because it's been such a crazy week. Uh, I'm going to just put my feet up, I think, and I'm going to come back on Monday, and then we're going to look at the profitable traders set up using the FX SSI indicators. So have a good one. Have a nice weekend. And uh, do remember to be careful. And I'll speak to you on Monday.